everybody welcome back to mini bike mike's garage again well this is video number two on this topaz orange honda ct70 hk0 that we have completely torn or blown apart um, go back and watch video number one it'll explain a little bit about the bike uh, i got it as a twisted bent frame and was kind of somewhat challenged to see if i could just make something out of it now I believe uh, Terry Burley, the guy that challenged me, I, I believe he was just joking when he said that. And uh, I, I took him, I thought, you know what, let's let's try it. Let's see, he's thrown out the challenge. Let's see what we can do. And so here we are. So we've got it completely tore apart. Uh, I have taken as many of the dents and dings and stuff out of it that, that I can with my little skills of body work and so forth but uh, so the goal that I have set forth is to try and build a bike out of it um, rat bike I'm not real big into the rat rod term or whatever but I mean we're not going to paint it I'm kind of throwing it up in the air do I leave the paint that's on it or do I even just take it all the way down to bare metal I've always always kind of like the look of the bare metal ones now I do that, it'll really show up some of the, the scars of the material and stuff, but that's kind of what I'm going for. Um, I talked about in the first video, you know, all the holes. I'm going to actually try and bolt this frame back together. Now, I have gone through and cleaned up the edges so that on the inside, I can weld and make it, you know, a good sturdy frame, but you're going to see a lot of uh, exposed hardware when this is is done. And then the, the idea is that, uh, you know, do something totally different than what I normally do. Uh, normally, I try and keep bikes looking typically, you know, like a stock CT70. Now, I may put a bigger engine in a Lifen or whatever, but on this one, we're going to go a little bit longer forks on the front end and a stretched swing arm and some big tires and basically going to see if we can make like a like an old school rigid chopper 70s 60s 70s choppers look out of it um i don't know we're just playing if it if it fails it fails but hey let's have fun with it while we can so uh, i'm gonna get set up show you what else i've got here on the table and uh, we will start trying to assemble it so Before I start assembling and trying to put it all back together, just kind of show you, I just laid out some a few tools. I think we're going to clamp uh, an old engine shell into the clamp up there at the front of the table, and that will give us something to build around to make sure that we've got everything square, and then that when we get done, we can actually put an engine in it. So I think we'll we'll build around that, uh, and then I've just got some some tools here to do that. Um, some punches for moving things around if we need to. Uh, this is going to be a tube. Oh, drop it, sorry. That, that spaces the, fra the frame the correct distance on the back. I measured the inside of another frame, came up with that, and that piece slides right over top of that. So, and then just miscellaneous. We're just going to go with quarter inch uh, hardware and try and bolt it together. I know I should probably use metric since it's a Japanese bike, but this is what I have. That's what I'm gonna use. So, all right, I'm gonna get you guys set up in a closer view of the clamp up there and, and let's just start trying to put it together and see how this goes. All right, I think, I think I wanna put it, I think I want the back end off the back of the table here so it's a little easier for me to to work on. Yeah, that feels pretty good. Now I have, this is the cradle that holds the engine and I've, I've straightened it, you know, the best I could. It doesn't look bad. 
kind of cleaned it up in case we need to do any welding on it. Oh yeah, that doesn't, that doesn't look too bad at all. Uh, okay, the bottom bolt I can go ahead and put in because it doesn't capture any part of the uh, those panels up there. The top bolt, I think I have to put the panels on before I put the bolt through. I may have too many washers on this thing. Need to go super tight, but ah, don't have my battery in it. Hang on just a second. Okay, yeah, so we can still move it. That's good. Okay, uh, let me grab my other tools. Grab this pipe. Bring some of this stuff up here. All right, this is the... I left the, even though the H model bike doesn't use a rear brake because it's got the clutch, it still has that. And I left that on there so it gives me something to set this panel on. Better get this bolt ready. didn't do I forgot to put that uh, pipe across the back here hang on just let's uh let's go ahead and get this started maybe we'll keep it all from falling apart there we go there we go that gives us the correct width at the back I'm going to uh, go ahead and film putting a, a, a little bit of this together and then uh, probably we'll stop and, and finish bolting things up. Uh, let's see, grab some hardware. You don't need to watch me put 300 screws or bolts and nuts through them, but uh, how to get set up here so I don't spill all these, all this stuff out. Do we want the heads of the bolts or do we want the threads sticking out? Oh, that's going to be, that'll be a little bit long. Let's, <laughs> I don't know, are you guys seeing that? Ah, you're kind of too far away, aren't you? Yeah. But I'm really uh, happy with the way this frame turned out. Let's see, let's put one on this side just to kind of... piece was tricky tricky to get out so I think I'll try and get it in back in first and maybe I should have put it in before I put some of those other pieces in. It's got to go underneath that pipe. 
Yeah, I think I got ahead of myself there. I might want to back these off so I can spread the frame back apart. Oh, there you go. There it is. Okay, I'm going to continue to do that. Take bolts and just keep bolting pieces together here. I'll put a couple more in here so you can kind of start to see the look. I don't know. I'm trying to decide if I like. I think I'm kind of digging the uh, having the extra threads stick out. I, I don't know. put this one on and I'm gonna bring you guys in take a look at it and then we will fast forward and uh, you know the other thing I probably want to do is put the swing arm on make sure that the swing arm is gonna go We don't want to pull that, but that shouldn't, we can't really pull that any tighter than what the, yeah, than, than that bottom bolt. The engine is keeping that from. We shouldn't have a problem here. So I'm going to continue that, fill all these uh, bolt holes up, and most of these, and continue to bolt these side, sides to uh, together. Boy, that's a heck of a lot straighter than what we started. And then this will all need to get re-welded and... I may take like a piece of angle iron and put it over the top to, you know, how it has the chrome strip, but instead of a chrome strip, we may take a piece of V, you know, 90 degree angle and lay it across there and weld along each side to really strengthen it up. We'll see. All right. I'm not going to bore you with uh, just watching me put a bunch of bolts and nuts in. I'll, I'll bring you back in just a few minutes. All right. So I'm an hour later and $300 in hardware later uh i've got this all bolted together now i know when i showed putting those bolts in i, I could see how some of you guys were looking at me and i was losing you you're like i don't see the vision here mike and and i gotta admit after having it all done <clears throat> i'm kind of wavering myself but gotta trust the system gotta gotta trust the process here gotta gotta let it play out let's see what it looks like uh we can make an adjustments down the road but, uh, well, let, let me show it to you.
Yeah, she looks uh, something out of the 90s punk rock. I'm not, I'm not so sure after doing it all. Maybe I should have put just the heads of the bolts out. But you know what? We can always come back and cut these off or we can put acorns on them or do something. Uh, hell, the worst case, we, now we got places to bolt things anyway if we need to. So, <laughs> But uh, uh, that's what I'm looking at. Now you can see how it's, there's a gap down there in the, on the bottom. I am not worried about that at all. Uh, we'll get to that later down the road, but I like how the top, I've got it actually got a vice grip on it, but it doesn't really need it. It's, it's tight together uh, anyway. So I get it, you're, you're not liking it, but just stick with me here, okay? Next thing I think I need to do is take that swing arm off. I've got a couple other swing arms. I think we've got a, a ST90 and maybe a Z50. I need to see which one fits. I want to go on the outside of the frame. I want the swing arm to come here because we're actually going to, because this, the whole thing, in my head, when the whole thing is done, the frame is going to sit more like this. Maybe not quite that much of an angle. So the swing arm is going to come out and then go up at an angle to meet the tire. And then there's going to be other bars coming down to meet the tire. So, and this will all be welded in tight, rigid. So anyway, I want to, uh, and I'm, I want to go with kind of a fat tire on the back, and I'm afraid this swing arm might not be wide enough, so I think I want bars that are on the outside. So that's what I'm going to do. Let's uh, let's yank this one off of here real quick. I know there's a small bit of difference between the uh, ST90 and the CT70 on this lower part. Yeah, Z50 must be wider. That's I don't want to <clears throat> I don't want to mess with that. <clears throat> and it didn't look like it reached up in there. I mean, I guess I could trim the frame right here, but it doesn't quite reach. It hits see what the ST90 looks like. It should be close, I would think. It uh, doesn't quite, it's a little too wide. That surprises me. I thought the ST90 was wider down there. But I think that will work. And then we'll wind up cutting, cutting this and lengthening it. Yeah, first of all, I think I'm gonna make some modifications here and get it to get it to bolt on there first. So I'm gonna have to take that. It's not gonna take much. Grind those bushings down just a little bit so it'll fit up in there. So I got that swing arm on there. I did have to uh, radius this piece of the bracket on the CT70 frame, I did have to grind it back some and uh, kind of take out some material so that this could fit on there far enough for the bolts to line up and swing up far enough where I think I want it. Uh, I think I want, I think I want four inches Of ground clearance something like that uh, bear with me I'm gonna go get some more pieces to put underneath here hang on just one second so let me just state now that I've never built a chopper before and I don't know if there's any specific geometry to building a chopper. Um, 
But I think for, for me, the aesthetics, I think I want this to be parallel with the ground. It's a little deceiving because this table uh, is higher on this left side than it is on the right side. Um, but I think I want a, a four inch, this is a four inch square tube. I think I want four inches of ground clearance. <clears throat> I think when we're all done and this is sitting on level ground, I want the swing arm well, it's not really going to be a swing arm. It's going to be rigid. Uh, I think I want it parallel to the ground to a point that it comes back, and then it will come up at an angle to hit the uh, to hit the, the axle bolt. Okay. I don't think I've just set this tire up there. That's a ST90 rim and tire, 14 inch. I think when I'm set, when I'm done, I think I want to go with a little beefier tire. I've got this, I've got this really big, thick knobby that I just love. And it's ridiculous to put it on this type of bike, but that just makes this that much more fun. You know, it's just, I just, I just think it'll look cool. Uh, so, but I don't know that I want it that far back. I don't know if I want that big of a swing arm. So I'm thinking about what I'm going to, I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to, I'm going to chop off where these little pieces are right here. I think I'm going to chop off right behind those and gain, you know, three inches, three, three and a half inches anyway, that I can roll this forward. You know what, I might even go all the way to this, because we're going to wind up cutting this, this shock post off. We're not going to have any shocks. There's going to be another tube. So this, let me back up. I'm sorry. I'm kind of, I'm all over the place here. Sorry. So this will come out to about where it's at now, and then up to the axle bolt. And then there will be a straight bar that is welded to the frame right here that will come down and meet that point and that's where the axle bolt and the axle adjuster will be and I think I really want to roll this all forward I think I'm going to cut these shock mounts off and I think I'm going to basically cut off the frame right about where that tube is that I put in where this where this continues through and maybe cut from here back off and that will gain us what is that? Four and a half inches, five inches. And we can't roll it all the way up to where it hits, but you know we can. We have got to leave a little bit of clearance. But yeah, I think maybe that's what I'll do. Uh, I'm gonna go get a, a bar and put something that I can use as a reference here. Hang on just a second. Well, the more I look at it, the more I think I'm off on this measurement. I'm too high. I really want this tube to run in a line with the backbone of the frame right here. I don't want it. I guess I could angle it down a little. But in my mind, originally, I felt like this, this went straight and then, you know, there was an axle plate welded here with the hole in it. And if I roll this in, roll the back tire in farther, that's gonna put that hole that much lower than this. So the whole thing might, I might have to go just a couple inches here. Or I may have to put a, a, a bend, have both of these up and then in what to do, what to do, what to do. I think first thing I'm going to do is cut this frame off so I know exactly how far I can roll the tire. I really can't do any of this until I know where the tire has to be. Does that sound logical to you guys? I think that's what I, I think that's what I need to do. I'm going to roll, cut that off. I gotta have that in the right spot, so I gotta know where to make these go to. Yep, all right. So that's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna go back and take 
and cut cut this off and see if I can't gain a, a little bit time tuck that tire up in there just a little bit farther you know there's a uh, a reason I don't do a lot of custom stuff and it's just now kind of coming back to me why I don't uh, <laughs> while I don't do them uh, I, there's some things that are starting to hit me I'm starting to uh, put two and two together here a little bit Swing arm is seven and a half inches between the plate and plate to get the tire to fit. Frame is only five inches from here to the other side. So I'm going to have to space this bar out an inch and a quarter on each side to get seven and a half inches in between them. So I'll need to space that out. So that's, that's one realization I've come to that to get that to work. If I don't, I'll have these two tight and they won't clear everything. And then the other realization, the other thing I've got to work around is chain. With the swing arm here, the chain is gonna rub on top of the swing arm. I might be able to put some kind of idler in there to keep it from doing that, not really sure. The top of the chain is going to come. We would have room. We just need to clear this right here. So I may have to drop. I may drop the swing arm down to where this bar is. It goes across that your brake pedal mounts to. Get rid of that. I'm not going to be running a brake pedal not probably on that anyway we'll, we'll do something different so if i drop this down then that gives me clearance to run the chain lots and lots of stuff to think about you change one thing and that changes three others down the down the road you know down the line so That's where I'm at. All right, I think I'm about ready to call it a day. I've messed with this thing long enough. I cut off that uh, the brake rod that goes across there where the brake pedal goes on, and I punched out the holes, and I moved the swing arm bolt down from this location down. So it's at the very bottom of the frame now. Um, I welded in, I cut off the end, I welded in some spacers. So this will have to come out here. Now we're gonna put a seat pan that will blend and we'll probably put, you know, a gusset here, box in, so that it goes from here and just kind of blends into the frame, the whole thing. But I think what I really need to do is I need to get the axle plates made for that and start tying in tying in the frame to the axle plates. So I think I'm gonna stop for, for today. We may still have to play with the height to get this. I don't, that's a little too far. I'd like, I like this tube, you know, to come and then there'll be a plate in the middle right here with the slot, the adjuster, and then the other tube coming up the same distance. So I'm still a little too high. I don't know if I want to rake back the frame anymore to get, you know, obviously the more, I, more rake I put on the frame, the lower that's going to get. I don't know if I want to go that much or not. I might. And I've actually got the wheel rolled up against the back of the frame. I could probably roll the wheel back a little bit and gain, gain some there too. Uh, lowering this should fix this problem. The chain should now have, will come right over top of all of this and not have any clearance issues. So hopefully we 
cleared that hurdle. I don't know. I'm having fun. It's uh, it's kind of coming together. I don't know. Give me your thoughts. You know, hit me with a comment. Uh, I know it's it's looking kind of ugly right now. And it, you know, it won't look pretty in the end, but uh, I just think it's, hopefully it's something neat just rolling down the road, take it to the bike shows here, or the car shows here in town and so forth. So just something different. All right, guys, I think I'm going to wrap it up. I really don't know how long this video's gotten, so I think I'm going to wrap it up for today. So uh, this was video number two, and this will be multiple parts of this one before we get this thing done. See you on the next video. Later.